Hi, I'm Paul Germain. Welcome to another session of Smart Boating. As you know, if you watched the show before, we cover a wide variety of topics from basic navigation to docking. And the general idea is to give you some information that will help you make smarter decisions and have more fun on the water. And this show is right up that alley today. It's on chartering, which is particularly timely, a particularly timely subject this time of year and in the middle of winter. And uh, joining me as an expert on that area, his name is Gig Michaud, who's a local charter boat captain based in Newburyport, Mass. Gig, good morning. Good morning, Paul. Thank you for having me. Good to see you. We've got a really cool show here today. I think people are going to learn a lot, really enjoy it. But before we get into the show, can you share a little bit about your boating background in the charting business? Thank you, Paul. Yes, I was basically in the womb on the water. Um, from the day I was born uh, and before, I've been on the water with my dad uh, and his boats. Um, I grew up as a young man running boats, five, six, seven years old. As I got a little older, 18 years old, I was running a 60-foot boat. Uh, so I've been on the water, uh, you know, my entire life. Uh, I went in the Navy as a Navy officer. I was on uh, 26 years in the Navy with four different ships, an aircraft carrier and so forth. So I've learned a lot about crossing the ocean on the water, came back and bought my own boats. And now I, uh, I have a wonderful charter business, Compass Rose Yacht Charters out of Newburyport. Oh, yeah. How long? When did you start that? I started that eight years ago, Paul because I wanted to get people who go to the ocean, look out on the ocean, but they quite frankly don't know um, what it looks like from the ocean looking back. And that's that, so I can give them both sides of that on the boat. That's if you beautiful. notice this boat, uh, it's a TR, a 35 footer. Mm -hmm. um, she's built very, very strong. She's very safe, very capable, mm -hmm. very seaworthy. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the boat, the cockpit is quite wide open. Yeah. So people yeah. can sit in the sun and enjoy panoramic views if the sun were to get a little bit too much, Paul, they go underneath the blue top and now they still have panoramic view, but it's out of the sun. And that drops about 10 to 15 degrees off the temperature oh. or they can go out on the bow. It's a nice yeah. wide open boat for them. Yeah, it's got a lot of space down below here. This is the SETI, if you will. This Beautifully is appointed. Common gathering spot. And uh, this is the console, this is the, this is the seating area out in the, uh, the main area of the boat that you were just talking about where they can get in the shade? Yeah, you're underneath in, in uh, the shade. I mean, uh, you're under the top in the shade there, yeah. but the seat's five people, so there's plenty of room. Plenty of room, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this is a good shot that shows that actually, the again, the, the ability for the boat to accommodate a group because it's, it's large and it's wide, right? And notice the extra folding seats that are very comfortable. Right, right. And I'm a, the luckiest captain in the world with my beautiful wife when she assists me. Oh, yeah, I believe that. I believe that. Well, you know, um, you've got just the right experience and just the right boat. So why don't we, why don't we keep talking about the, the core topic here was chartering. And, you know, we really can't cover all the topics, all the important points, but we can cover uh, a good number of them. And something that might be on many people's minds is, you know, why should I charter or where should I charter? And to me, it seems to break down to three basic buckets, a local charter, a regional charter, which might be, say, from Connecticut to Maine, and then a remote charter, which might be in, in the island somewhere. Um, or in Florida. Or in Florida. That's right. That's right. Um, what do you think? Uh, we've got some We've got some images here. This is a very common scene for a local charter, isn't it? It is. And if you notice the faces, most people don't get out on the water. Those that are on the water love it. Those that, that wish they could afford a boat don't get out on the water. And that's, the, that's what I make available to them. Mm -hmm. Every one of those folks have been back several times now because they've had so much fun. But it, when you look at their faces, the anticipation of a great day is, is all over their face. They have a good time. And, and you can see some unusual sights out in the water. This one's kind of tough to make out. It looks like a giant sea turtle, but it's really not that, is it? No, it's actually a sunfish, Paul. Mm -hmm. And they actually will, will sit right there. I'll back the boat up to them and they'll stay right at the boat so people can take as many pictures and, and look at them. It's almost like a, a puppy dog that wants to come up and be petted. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Here's another interesting image. You don't you don't see this uh, every day of the week, do you? Uh, no, you don't. But you're seeing it more and more now, Paul, because there's more fish supply coming into the Merrimack as they've cleaned it. 
and the eagles are now starting to populate considerably more. So you start to see this a little bit more often. Wow, that's great. And of course, there's lots of local events in a local charter. This is part of the Schooner Festival, right? It is. It's the Blue Nose out of Nova Scotia, Paul. Uh, Gloucester has a boat very similar to it um, called the Adventure, but you see it at the Schooner races and at, at other times, these boats coming in and out of the Gloucester Harbor. Yeah, so it's a fun thing to see. And this is a lighthouse. I believe this is in Maine, is it? Yes, it's not a noble light, a noble light. I'm sorry, noble light in right off of a York, Maine area. Yeah. A beautiful site. But there are many, many, many different um, uh, sites like this with all the different lighthouses all over New England. Right, exactly. This is an example of the regional flavor where there's a lot of different you could be a boater in Maine and charter a boat in Massachusetts and see a whole new environment that's just as interesting as maybe your native cruising grounds. You can, and even seeing this light from different angles, from the other side, from behind it, it, it changes it as well. Isn't that interesting, huh? And of course, so, so there's a lot of uh, interest in local and regional charters that gives people a chance to have fun with friends, um, see new areas, maybe try out a new boat. And then of course, a lot of people think of going more remote. This is a this is a shot of Florida. That that can be an attractive place to charter a boat, right? Especially in the winter, Paul. It's a little <laughs> colder up here. But yes, there's so many sites to see, and they're all different. Everything you see is is different, as you as uh, some of the pictures will will see. They, it, it's just so beautiful. Yes, and here's another picture, and this is actually the Caribbean. Kind of a unique color to the water in the Caribbean, isn't there? It's that aqua blue that you don't see around here and it's all over the, the Caribbean. So pretty. Yes. Yes. You know, something I want to mention gig before we go further is we're going to be showing a lot of different destinations and talking about the pros and cons, but neither you nor I are advocating travel necessarily right now. We've got the, the pandemic going on and that's really a personal choice. So what I like us to do today is to help people understand the pros and cons of the different choices they have. And then when the timing is right for them, where they feel personally safe, if they want to go remote, they go remote. Right? Exactly so right. Make that um, things are getting safer sooner. Uh, the shots are here. So people are going to start to travel more. And there's just so many beautiful destinations to see. Right. There's some spots to go to. So let's, let's take a look at look, look through them because they do have some, if they thought, boy, this looks great. I'd like to do a remote charter. Let's look at some of the destinations. Again, we come back to Florida. Uh, Florida has some advances. It's, it's relatively local. It's relatively inexpensive. Everyone speaks English. Uh, and they got some great cruising, right? They do. It, it's also warm. Uh, and the watercolor is beautiful down there as well. Uh, you can see the ocean. Uh, you can see the, the buildings from the ocean. But you yeah. can go behind the buildings into a lot of the canals and go right up behind people's multi-million dollar mansions all by chartering a boat that right. you can't right. see otherwise. Right, it's a fun location. And we've got a couple of pictures here, photos courtesy of the US Virgin Islands. This is a, this is a shot of the Virgin Islands. And here's really a classic one. Um, again, Virgin Islands, again, some travel involved, but relatively close, uh, English speaking, um, really nice weather and line of sight cruising. And this, this picture kind of, pulls it together to a certain extent, doesn't it? But it does, because if you notice the color again, it's just gorgeous. But if you also notice, it's sparse of boats. So there's a lot of nice places you can go where you can anchor, have complete privacy, swim, have, have a glass of wine. And then there are other places where there's a lot more uh, people, a lot more boats that are anchored and, and you can watch and, and view the boats and the swimmers and so forth. So there's so many different options. Right. And We've got another photo here. A lot of people like to go to the Virgin Islands or, you know, offshore because of the unique architecture. There's a lot of unique arch architecture there. And, and uh, we've got another shot. This one is, this is a famous location in the Virgin Islands, isn't it? Yes, it's the cruise, uh, it, it cruise, um, um, cruise Bay. at St. John, Cruise Bay at St. John. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's where you'd come in. To, uh, to visit the island, the, the ferry boats, as you can see them docked there, they pull into that location. Yeah. As soon as you walk off, there's restaurants, shops, it's beautiful, but there's also places you can charter boats. Yeah, it's a fun place to go. And, and this, this photo here, this is, again, courtesy of the Virgin Islands, but we're using it today as a placeholder for the Med and for 
places even more exotic like Tahiti. And, and I think this captures the fact that regardless of this remote location where sometimes the language is a little different, the currency is a little different, you get into a whole different feel when you go to these remote, remote locations to chart, right? You do. And although this is the Caribbean, um, on the Navy ships, I've served um, through s several different countries in Europe. And the terracing of the houses all the way up the mountainsides is just spectacular. And this is a small example of what you'd see if you were in the Mediterranean. Right. So that's going to be another great, a great alternative. Now let's take a look. So you say, okay, I'm going to go remote. I might go to Florida, the Caribbean, the Med, uh, South Tahiti. And now you've got some choices to make. And one of those choices is the boat that you're going to select. And they really break down into sailboats and power boats, monohulls and cats. Um, yeah. This is an example. What's this about a 50, 52 foot monohull? Yes, it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we've got some pictures of this. What do you see as kind of the pros and cons of someone chartering a monohull like this? Well, when you charter a monohull, you can see the inside is beautiful on the boat. It's a little smaller um, than a than chartering a power boat, yeah. but the beauty of this is that people who like to sail, who are masters at sailing, yeah. will charter a monohull unless they've uh, brought some other couples with them to help defer the costs. Mm -hmm. And a monohull at that point is probably, you better know the couple you're with uh, or a couple of couples you're with um, and, and like them a lot because you have less privacy. Yeah. Um, but it, as far as people that are used to sailing that want to sail this type of monohull boat, uh, it's fabulous for them. That's what they used to. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. And again, a, a popular, very popular boat down in the Caribbean, these remote locations would be a catamaran, right? Uh, so here's a nice picture of a catamaran here. What what do you see as the primary benefits and, and maybe a drawbacks with the catamaran design? Well, Paul, the nice thing about the catamaran is it's far more stable. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, when, when the waves are, are rolling a little and you're at anchor and so forth, it's a wider base. So yeah. it stays far more stable, but like this picture on the inside, there's a lot more room as well. Uh, and the final thing is if you're chartering with other people that are splitting your costs, the, the cabins, there are two to four cabins on the outside wings, mm -hmm. uh, the pontoon area. So you have total privacy, yeah. um, which makes it considerably easier for groups to travel together, share the cost and enjoy a wonderful week long vacation or whatever they're going for. Good point. Let's look at, uh, of course you can rent a traditional quote-unquote monohull powerboat. This is a big Viking here, a big sport fish. And these, when you get into a large powerboat, you normally get some beams. So again, you got, you got a fair amount of room in there, don't you? You do. You have an awful lot more room. Um, and, and the berthing is somewhat separated. Um, right. So it, but it, you know, the, the downside is it's costly to uh, power a boat that you pay in the fuel for, where a sailboat, you're, you're traveling with the uh, free wind, if That's there's true. wind. And they've got big cockpits. That's a nice aspect of that. Speaking of big cockpits or room, this is a power cat, right? So this is a power boat, but it's a catamaran. What is the same principle as the is the uh, the catamaran sailboat, Paul? Yeah. Only yeah. it's under power. Mm -hmm. uh, but look at the open space up forward. They they have cushions that go over those areas right there, yeah. and people can sit out in the sun, lay in the sun, you know, have a cocktail, have some cheese and crackers, and have a wonderful view. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. OK, so someone uh, again, I'm just trying to follow along here. Someone says, uh, I like the Caribbean. That looks attractive. Uh, I've selected uh, a location. I've, I've selected a boat. And then another choice that people have to make is, well, how am I going to captain this boat? Am I going to well, am I going to hire well, you want to find a you want to find a handsome captain to begin with? OK, just kidding, Paul. Good point. Uh, anyway, that's a picture of me at the helm of, of uh, my 35 footer. Yeah. And the smile I have on my face is so natural because the company that I meet on these charters just brings so much joy. It, they really mm -hmm. do. I'm probably laughing at something that was said in the cockpit of, of uh, the group. They're right. just so much fun. So what are the advantages in short here, Gig, about hiring a captain? What are the pros and cons of that, that type of arrangement? Well, the, the, uh, the strong pros is the um, knowledge that he has, the innate knowledge right. uh, of years of experience. He knows the area. He knows the boat. He knows how to handle the boat. He right. knows how to, you know, uh, 
uh, navigate the, the area and give some great history. And he, he also knows a lot about weather. Right? He takes What's responsibility that? for the navigation. Yes. Yeah. So this very much so. So it costs a little bit more money, but you've got some real benefits there. And oftentimes there's a crew, right? That's not just a captain, but there's a first mate that helps out and or more people. So again, that responsibility and that knowledge base gets divided up among another number of people, which can leave the guests more carefree, right? Absolutely. If, if you've hired a captain, he has a crew, he's trained the crew, the crew knows exactly what to do. And the, and the clients, the, the customers are just enjoying doing nothing but it, looking around and, and talking with each other and having a great time. Having fun, yeah. Now, the other alternative here is a bare boat. Let's imagine this young lady is uh, maybe with her significant other. They've, they've had a lot of boating experience. They say, geez, I think I'd like to just rent a boat, if you will charter a boat and uh, we'll, we'll pilot it ourselves. That can be a viable alternative. Uh, you can save money that way. What do you see again in short, what, what are the pros and cons of this? Or maybe saving money is the pro. What do you see as the drawback to this? Sa saving money is, uh, is certainly it, um, but that's not the only thing. The nice thing about uh, going on your own is you have total privacy. Um, when you have a captain and a crew, you know, it's uh, it's like the president of the United States going somewhere and he's got 100 people around him at all times. Right. Uh, you have privacy. You have a uh, uh, little less money costs. But the downside is unless you really experience and especially in the area you're in, um, you may not know about certain parts of that area where there's sandbars that, that shift around and you don't know about them. Yeah. Uh, and you could ground the boat, et cetera. Or maybe you don't know the weather patterns when when you're uh, chartering a boat. So in an area you're not familiar with. So there's pros and cons. Yeah, I want to be careful on the trade-offs. So someone, uh, again, and they're going through this thinking process and, and they've made some decisions based on the, uh, the information we're sharing with them. Um, this, there's really a variety of outlets to get a boat from, particularly if you're going, what doesn't matter whether you're going local or remote, really. But there's right. this very large operations, which typically have uh, newer fleets, um, and then there's mid-size operations that have a mixture of new boats and older boats. There's smaller fleets that are represented oftentimes by a broker. And then there's right. individuals to charter their boat. Uh, so there's some, uh, there's some kind of a price newness variables to deal with there, I guess. There is, Paul. The newer the boat, the more expensive it is. But you have security to know that the boat is brand new. Some of the uh, less expensive companies, and not substantially less expensive, but less expensive, uh, have bought their used boats, which are still in supreme um, condition because they yes. get inspected regularly. Yeah. So they're still in very nice shape, but they're a little less expensive. Yes, yes, yes. So you want to just know their alternatives and maybe explore a few of them. Let's take a look at this. Now, this is your boat underway. What I wanted to talk about here briefly was cost. So, so what... What are the costs for a local charter like your boat, uh, maybe on the half day and the full day basis? And then let's talk a little bit about what it would be remote. Well, I charter at a minimum two hours and that's 320, but a half a day is about 640 to 740. And, and a full day, eight hours, 10 hours is around 12 to $1,300. Um, and, and the boat underway with this, with this speed can get you far more places. Um, like out of Newburyport, I can go to Gloucester, Salem, Beverly, Marblehead, Manchester, uh, going to Rockport and so forth, or maybe up to, to uh, the Isles of Shoals or up into Maine. So a faster boat like this allows you to go further um, without missing anything along the way. Good point. And then here's an example of a boat you might uh, charter, uh, again, in a remote location. My understanding is that uh, the charter rates for a week uh, per couple uh, would uh, vary. Um, they could be, um, say, uh, 5000 to 12000 per week. That's just kind of a ballpark est estimate. But it gives you a little bit of a scale to judge, you know, what a local charter costs versus a remote. That's correct. It's more expensive. You're going more days and the age of the boat or the type of boat. And you have to factor in if, you pow if you're taking a power cat or a power boat, um, there's fuel costs, again, uh, as I said before, above and beyond the sale, but you're going further places and, and experiencing, you know, more to see. So there's trade-offs. Right. And a, and a bare boat would be, um, well, it's hard to estimate. It would be on a case-by-case -case basis. 
but it would be probably maybe 50% or so of the, of, of the crude cost, you think? Well, the, the wages are obviously the biggest factor. Um, you're still going to have to pay for fuel and things like that. But the wages of two people, especially if they're staying on board, um, you know, are gonna, you've got to pay for their overnights. You've got to pay for the whole 10-hour days and so forth. So it would be considerably cheaper. Right, right, right. So, again, you want to weigh those trade-offs. Uh, in some cases, if uh, you know, you've got the experience and so on, uh, you can save money by doing the, uh, the bare boat. But if you're on unfamiliar waters, oftentimes to have a captain there that's familiar with the situation can really be worth its weight in gold, right? Well, you can. And also keep in mind, the crew is probably going to be cooking for you. They've got prepared, prepared meals each day. So yeah. there's, there's you know, value to, uh, to a crew as well. Well, that's a good point. You know, um, we covered a, a bit of ground here. And I, I thought we'd share some tips, you know, based on your experience in chartering. Um, the first one, maybe maybe we've got five or six points we can make with people here fairly quickly. First one is compatibility. This seems to be a pretty big element to making a successful charter, particularly something that's remote that's going to go on for a few days. That's right. If you notice the, the, this couple, again, the, sa the same theme, Paul, is look at the smiles on their faces. Mm -hmm. They're just having a ball seeing all the scenery that they would not see on the, on the land. But more yeah. importantly, this particular couple, or these two couples, actually were very, very good. We went up to Maine, spent an overnight up in Maine, mm -hmm. and the compatibility was tremendous, and it, it shows in their faces here. Great couples. Right, that's important. This, this shot here shows a, a fellow doing a bare boat. Um, and, and when you're going to do that, it's a great idea, but you have to really make sure that the skipper has the confidence to handle the responsibility of that sort of thing. You definitely want to know who you're going with and, and uh, whether your, your best friend's husband is, is that good on the boat because uh, there's no, you're alone out there. You, and so, but if you look at the, this particular picture, Paul, the people looking at the camera, big smiles, having a ball, but the fellow who's now captaining the boat He's got a stern face. He's looking out to see where he's going, what's going happening ahead. So he's not enjoying the day like these folks are. So yeah. you, you, you want to make sure that, uh, that you got the right uh, captain that you're going with. Yeah, he's got to focus. And here's a shot here. Uh, again, we got a, a bare boat captain. We've got a crew. A couple of important elements here, I think, are one is the crew's competence, just like the captain has to be competent. It's great to have the crew to be somewhat competent and compatibility and good communication among the crew, right? And keep the young uh, folks uh, entertained and active so it makes it a very memorable time for them. Well, that's a good point. That just leads us right into this picture here. Here's a young young person and uh, this can be a great experience for them if it's properly planned, right? Paul, this fellow was very, very sharp. That happened to be on, on my boat. Um, young fellow, he, um, I asked if he wanted to steer. Um, he jumped right up on the seat. And then as we were going along, of course, I'm keeping my eyes focused as a captain would, yeah. but I'm teaching him how to power the boat up, how to slow it down. I'm teaching him the radar I'm teaching him the, the uh, GPS. And he had so much fun. His parents have written me since saying that he is, he is going to make a, uh, either a living on the water or he's going to have his own boat as he grows up because this was so memorable and it allowed the parents to have their own good time without worrying, you know, whether their kids are happy or not. Yeah, no, that's great. And this picture here, again, shows some kids out there uh, uh, having a good time. And again, once you accommodate them in your plans, I think it can all work. Uh, I want to kind of uh, kind of bring this to a close in terms of looking at the final tip that we might share with them, which is seems to me that planning is a, is a key element to making a charter, whether it's local or remote, go smoothly. Absolutely. And when I'm talking to customers, there are times I pass up a charter because the weather may not be uh, quite to what I think would be their, their liking. If you notice the water background here, it's completely flat. Um, I want to make sure the weather's good. I want to make sure the, the sun is out. I want to make sure they have a great time. Mm -hmm. And I get very, very um, a, a large amount of charters that want to go out at sunset because it's so romantic sitting out on the bow yeah. all alone with the couple that's out there looking at the sun or a group that, that uh, you know, looks at the sun behind and you have that yellow glow. It's, it's just so beautiful with the sunset cruises. It is beautiful. Yeah. Well, you know, we've, we've 
we've covered a lot of ground here today, I think, on uh, chartering, you know, from uh, deciding, uh, you know, whether they want to do a local, regional, or remote. It's not mutually exclusive. Yeah. We talked about the different types of boats, different way to captain, different costs, and so on and so forth. And hopefully we've given people a balanced picture here of what it is to get involved in chartering. Do you have anything you'd like to add before we wrap up the show today? Well, Paul, it's been a great, um, great opportunity to be on, on your uh, show today. And I would re recommend that if people are, are interested but don't know what to do, if they look up Compass Rose Yacht Charters mm -hmm. in Newburyport, Compass mm -hmm. Rose Yacht Charters in Newburyport, uh, they can give me a call. My phone number's there. My email's there. They can call me. I'd be happy to answer any questions that they have, whether it's my boat or, or going somewhere else. I'd be yeah. happy to uh, take their calls. Great. Well, thank you very much. And, thank you, uh, Paul. Thank you, Smart Boating viewers, for watching. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about some of the other shows or have questions or comments, visit us at our website, www.smartboatingus.com.